All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Kings of the Storm number five. This is not Kevin Naki. It is my good friend, Mr. Shane Gucci. How are you, sir? I'm very good. As flattering as it is to be uh, <laughs> under the shadow of Kevin Oops, Naki, I am not up to that level. But uh, thank you for having me uh, fill in for the the great one that is Cat's Pajamas, Kevin Naki. I'm uh, looking forward to this match quite a bit. You got big shoes to fill, Mr. I do. To fill. Uh, so, yeah, apparently we were, it was decided that I'm doing third place, and then Xander's not here, and I lost Kevin. It's like, bam, the Shane Gucci four-court sandwich. Boom. Exactly. All right, so what have we seen today? We've seen actually quite a bit of things. We have seen the, yeah. both Cloud9 rosters, EG and Glorious, all make it through to the round two, where, of course, Symbiote Gaming, the kings of the Nexus themselves, were waiting with ESV Wildfire, Clairvoyant, and ESV Tempest. They then pared down. Uh, it's something to note. Symbiote Gaming has not dropped a game. Surprise, surprise. surprise. Uh, but they did beat out Evil Geniuses, which is why we're going to see them here in third place. And, of course, we did mm -hmm. just see Maelstrom beat out Glorious 2-0 as well. Very powerful stuff. If you want to watch the finals, go over to Solid Jake GG. He and Omega Black Mage, a.k.a. the Koobs. They're going to be covering that as we got our own best of three here. And, Mr. Shane, can you tell us a little bit about some of the games you've done today? Absolutely. Um, I did the uh, Tempest versus Nexus champ, which was the round one, and it was a 2-0 going the way of Tempest, but the total length of time it took to do that series I think was about 90 minutes. Uh, the first game was 45 minutes, and the second one was like 30-something Yeah, minutes. I heard so about that. That, that. Was, that was a marathon. That was a marathon. Uh, uh, then I casted Glorious versus Tempest. There were two pretty good games. Glorious uh, won them in rather convincing manner, though. And I do have to say, it seems like Glorious has, is uh, resurging back to their old ways of hyper-aggression. I feel like they kind of fell back from that the past couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. But, you know, Glorious was always so well-known for their early game hyper-aggression, specifically yeah. Kerrigan. They've, they, they've been picking up Kerrigan left and right in this tournament, from what I see. And it's uh, yep. fun to see a glare on <laughs> Kerrigan. It's always fun to see glaring on that hero. Yep, I can attest I've seen a Glorong uh, Kerrigan and a Glorong yeah. Glorong. Definitely some fun stuff. Uh, we're jumping into the bands as first match. Would you believe is going to be the Blackhearts? So uh, let's, really? uh, let's jump into that, Mr. Mr. Shane Gucci, as we shall get this rolling. First ban going to be Falstad, and this is a first for me. He's usually been the first pick, mm -hmm. but now mm -hmm. he's actually going to be banned material. Yeah, I, I think a lot of it has to be attributed to the um, all the changes from last patch and how I think Tychus and Falstad, I, I was talking to a lot of people on other different teams, people think Falstad and Tychus are now kind of parallels of each other yep. as far as the strength yep. that they have. Obviously, they both bring different things to the table, But and I've been predicting for uh, in my own little world uh, that Falstad will start seeing bans, and I'm it, it doesn't surprise me uh, just because of how Rewind was changed and everything like that and how the maps have been changed and whatnot to see Falstad starting to get banned. Well, to go on the flip side there, Stitches is going to be the ban out here from ZPs and crews. So Stitches has been seeing a lot more play yeah. today as well. He has. And I'm, I'm a big fan. I love Stitches. I was a, from Dota 2. I was a big Pudge guy, so I always love seeing Stitches play. Um, and Cloud9 brought him out. I believe that wasn't it Cloud9 that uh, brought him out oh, versus Glorious and just absolutely dominated. Correct me if I'm wrong, Sean, but I'm pretty sure that was the case. Uh, it's. I'm going to go with yes. Okay, understood. Understood. Yeah, and awesome a big thing to that. note is uh, the, we're going deeper into the uh, the draft here. The Tychus Tassadar pickup. So the the double T's, the TNT Tychus Tassadar <laughs> being picked up for Glorious Gaming. We talked about that, Mister uh, Sunaki and I. It was just like anything that starts with T Y is just yeah. really good. In this game. <laughs> Tychus Tyrael Tyranda, and there's two of the three right there. The Tychus is not a big surprise. He's the king of the assassins. He's been mm -hmm. almost, I think, banned in every game. I've seen him one game today. Uh, yes. One of our, like, now eight or so. Uh, so, But Tyrael. Tyrael is somebody that we haven't seen a lot of, at least on yeah. my side of the roster. We've been seeing a lot of Arthas or a lot of Arthas bands and then Stitches. And now, of course, we got the flip with the Stitches band into an Arthas. We've also yep. been seeing Chen. We had one game of Anubarak, and very quickly did we determine that that was not worth. Yeah, Anubarak really got pushed into the ground, unfortunately. Uh, Glorious did play him versus a uh, Tempest. In a very aggressive game, it was a, a Nubrak with a Kerrigan, and it was a three assassin single warrior support game, and a Nubrak was a single support. It actually worked out pretty well, though. Uh, but he got picked. I mean, there's a couple times where ZP was playing a Nubrak, and he just got destroyed because of the scaling on his shield and how it got yes. tuned down. Indeed. Uh, 
And one thing is just that Tassadar picks, are, we're not seeing Tassadar ban as often. We're seeing getting picked later into the draft as well, as evident by the draft uh, that's ongoing right now. That is actually a misplay on my part. Um, it's not a Tyrael. That's supposed to be Tassadar. That's okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, I hit the wrong button. All right, I'm just going to reset this draft. It happens. Very quickly. Um, but do, do, do. All right, so we do actually have the next one down, if you'd like to go over that. Uh, yeah, Uther Avala. I think that's fairly pretty normal pickups there. Uh, Uther and Vala were fairly untouched in the last patch. They're consistent heroes that we see a good majority of the time. Obviously, Uther bringing his uh, kit to the table with his burst healing and his instant AoE stun. No surprise there. Uh, Vala, obviously, I mean, you don't have a Tychus. You can't pick Tychus. You can't pick Falstad. Who's next in the line? It's yeah, going to be your much. Vala. <laughs> and, oh, and I like this pickup from Glorious a lot. And we actually, two heroes we were just talking about, Kerrigan and Anubarak, are going to be the pickup for Glorious Gaming. And that's a lots of great roaming combination. Uh, and again, it it complements that hyper-aggression style that we're so familiar with Glorious Gaming. It's a great early game roaming combination in the Anubarak and Kerrigan. And also just brings such an insane amount of control uh, just throughout the whole entire arc of the game, from the early game all the way into the late game. It brings so much CC to the table for team fights, for roaming during the lane phase and everything like that. So I really, really like that as both the players respectively on those heroes are also very skilled in them. Apparently Nick just joined the party. I don't know how he did that, but because <laughs> we're in a custom game. Uh, alpha, please. At the same time, you're right. It's a really good roaming comp, but you can... How did I get kicked out of the... What? What's the... I don't know what's going on here, but we just got kicked out of the lobby. <laughs> Hashtag uh, alpha boys here. Let me, let me see it. Yeah. So Anubarak, again, in the match that I saw, Anubarak really did not deliver uh, what yep. he needed to. So I'm a little curious to see if there's going to be a difference here up against, you know, not Cloud9. Yep. Uh, hmm. Zagara, Jaina. Yeah, I guess that makes up the last picks there for evil geniuses. Yep, they uh, just but at the same time, yeah. So a Glaurong, Kerrigan, you were talking about this a bit earlier. He is absolutely massive on these roamers. Uh, I absolutely love his... Zera tool plays, so I'm very curious to see if he can make up for that loss earlier and bring one out here. But again, on the flip side, Evil Geniuses, the Uther, the Arthas, that's a very strong front line, and you can see yes. immediately past that. I, you know, have you been noticing more of the one tank, one healer comps? Yes, very much so. And I mean, I want to say it's attributed to the resurgence change, but I feel like there's a lot more going on than just that because even though these resurg res resurgence rather was nerfed in the duration, we're still seeing it picked almost exclusively at level 20 with heroes that have it. I actually casted a game that had seven resurgences in them, which is one of the reasons why that why it's my series early on. Just, yeah. What was yeah, that team was, comp, please? Like, oh my, you are not ready. Uh, it was Nexus Champ versus Tempest. Yeah. Uh, Nexus Champ was, uh, let me see, let me bear with me here, because like I said, it was a while ago because the game was so long, it was Sergeant Hammer, so Uther, Tassadar, yep. Chen, Arthas. It was a very low damage game. Yeah, yeah it, it just went on forever. Just people were dying and coming and dying and coming back. So, <laughs> I, I mean, I think that might have something to do with it, but there's also a lot of other factors that go into it. And I think Jaina, uh, Jaina seems really good at disrupting and and picking off like your, your frontline bruisers. I feel like uh, the comparison, I talked to some people, one, a good comparison since Jaina was picked up here that they have made is that she, her and Nova uh, have a lot of similarities in play style and that they both are very, they're countered by, you know, backline diving, like your Tyrael Judgments and your Illidans, and you know, your Kerrigans and things like that, where Nova was known for picking off the backline assassins. Jaina is more so good at picking off the frontline with her abilities. And that is, that came from multiple people, from uh, multiple competitive players from different people. I'm really excited to see Jaina, but at the same time, I feel like she's going to have to be really careful with her positioning in this game because she's up against a Anubarak and a Kerrigan. If she's caught out of position at all, she's going to get absolutely blown up before team fight even starts. Absolutely right. Yeah. And the last pickup here is going to be that bright wing here. For Glorious Gaming. So the game is afoot. It is the Black Hearts Bay, the game number one of the best of three for the third place here. Kings of the Storm Weekly number five. It will say Kevin Naki. Do not be fooled. This is Shane Gooberface, aka the Shane Goocher, one of the smoothest voices in Heroes of the Storm. Uh, Thank you. And, you know, you, hey, you did uh, a lot of great work there with the HPL. You got to give credit where credit is due. And it is always a pleasure to have you here on my stream. It's a, always a pleasure to be with you. Uh, I, I, I was looking forward to casting with you more. And obviously in the future, but we'll get all romantic and mushy later on as we are Talk in. That later, yeah. <laughs> exactly. 
in the game. The map, surprisingly, Black Hearts Bay is the first time I've casted it today. I don't know about you, Sean, but this is the first time I've casted Black Hearts Bay. My second, Bay. believe it or not. Your second. While I understand why people don't like this map on a competitive level, I actually like this map. Uh, uh, just, I think it's a fun, interesting, unique uh, mechanic in the map. But go, going ahead and go over the team before the gates go down here, ladies and gentlemen, on the left side of your map. We have Glorious Gaming in the blue. ZP's paying that Anubarak. Nirak on Brightwing. Cthulhuluk on his iconic Tychus. Glarong playing the Bat Kerrigan. And Syracuse on that beautiful Nexus Champ color coordinated Mech Tassadar. We've actually been seeing uh, some Nexus Charger coordination coming out uh, from the mounts in some of these teams. Uh, it looks really good, you know, by the end product. We have yes. all five of Glorious up here looking for the smiley face fight, and only four from Evil Geniuses. He's got Idra in the bottom, and it looks like they're going to be spreading out. As a note, Evil Geniuses does have a few subs. You see Equinox, you see Rusty in there to join Mookie Pants, Faye, and Idra. Uh, so do not be fooled. This is uh, more or less the full roster with just a few of their subs that we just don't get to see as often as we might yep. like. So Syracuse rotates bottom. A little bit of fight up top, though. Still lots of healthy, healthy heroes. No first bloods even close to being done. Yep, and I'm really looking forward to that level four talents and then Glorious hitting their stride in the early game and securing themselves an advantage through the roaming combination of Kerrigan and Anubarak. And I'm going to try to keep the Batman jokes to a minimum as I uh, already <laughs> kind of went a little ham on that last time I saw glaring on a Kerrigan. I will not be making any of the Batman jokes, but I'm just looking forward to that early game aggression that's going to be happening at any point in time here. You know what? I think Glorious actually just got all 10 coins. They did. They did. Both chests yep. going the way of Glorious. Wow. Now, usually in a solo queue, we'd be racing off to do these turnings. <laughs> And as a note, remember, towers now give experience, Shane. Yes. So on this map where cannonballs can take out entire town hall areas, if you can, if we can actually push in and get a tower in mid, that is such a massive advantage. Even if you yes. don't and you have the low-hanging fruit, still those towers can actually put you ahead significantly at the right time. Yeah, it's it's that change on its own has just changed the dynamic of early game pushes. Uh, and I really like it. Uh, it, it. It kind of made the tra early game Dragon Knights more effective on Dragonshire to where now you can obtain a little bit more with early game Dragon Knights. And obviously in the case of this map as well, where if you do get that early 10 coin turn, you do get the those two towers are pretty much guaranteed to go down uh, in the tier one mid. So it's definitely a little bit uh, change in how teams have to think about their tactics and strategy down here in mid lane. Mookie Pants is getting controlled really well. The overkill just being blanketed on him. And there's our first blood, Arthas going down and going the way of Glorious Gaming. And that was the Kerrigan initiation into the double stun from ZP and a grenade from our Tychus. Of course, the Tychus with the sustain and the overkill. It, you know, you might say, wow, that was a first blood on Arthas, one of the tankiest characters in the game. But yeah. still, this early on, nobody can 3v1 that well. And yeah. look at that. We are going to actually use that kill to our advantage. We got the experience, and now they're going to get that turn in, which means that it's going to be this gate and this fort pressure here in the mid. Yep, and while we have the chance, I'm looking at the level four talents, and again, we're gonna look at Tassadar. I know last game you, had, you guys had it to Tassadar, and Kevin talked about it. Yeah. Because we're not seeing, we're, we're seeing a variation in the build in Tassadar, as he was one of the heroes that received some of the most significant changes in his kit. And he, they're starting to, at level four, going with the mental acuity, which reduces the cooldown. So now the Oracle, his combat trait, which gives him a large amount of vision around him, is going to be up more often. Down here in mid lane, though, Nirek has got a nice Howling Blast. Shield himself up. Oh my lord, he's going to live. No, he's not. The poison finishes him off. So that is not another kill. Finally getting themselves on the board, EG, going their way. Yeah, I mean, it's one kill each side. It's, it's not the game at this point. But again, you see... Yeah. The difference in between towers or not towers, a little mm -hmm. bit of an experience advantage again, going the way of Glorious. So they are going to be, you know, farther ahead in the lead. They also have this pressure mounting bottom. Not only did they get those bruisers, but they also got the giants. And now Idra, oh, oh wow, man. that fountain tap is still not going to be enough. Too much poison. The Glorong and Venom combo with the rest of the team here. They're going to get even more towers and extend this experience lead for early game. Yep, Glorious Gaming doing what Glorious Gaming is known for and doing it very, very well, utilizing that Kerrigan and just putting so much pressure just wherever they can. And just that, I love the change of the towers, man. I can't get over it. I, I absolutely love it because it just focuses on early game pushing. I mean, look at the level discrepancy right now. We're barely four minutes in the game and they're already starting to push down a fort. 
as well. But the melt, right wing phase shifted in. A great two-man stun going on to Mookie Pants. And he death coils himself to barely keep himself alive. Now the turnaround on Anirak. He needs to be careful. Equinox trying to go in there, but Equinox needs to be careful. He's pretty way out in front there. CP's looking for the Imperators and Impales. There's not much follow-up. Nope, Idra going in there and laying down some cover for his brother. Now in the mid there, Carlton Lucky is able to pick up all five of those coins. Tigus is a great destroyer of chests with that attack speed after the windup. Uh, so he's able to pick that up basically before Rusty can even react. We're still putting the pressure here into the mid. And if Rusty doesn't do anything about that, the chip damage by itself will yeah. bring this fort to its knees. And a fort this early at five minutes, especially this yeah. close to 10, that's going to be an entire level lead going the way of Glorious, which means that they have a good opportunity to just kind of aggressively take coins or look for a fight and it looks like as i said you know they're going to be looking for those coins that will finish off that fort for sure mm -hmm. and top those towers again will just add more of a level lead for glorious yep they had they have that small window of opportunity right now where they have their level 10 and the enemy team does not but i think it's going to be going away relatively quickly as evil genius says is now right on the cusp of level 10 and there it is Looking at the ultimates real quick, I think everything looks pretty standard for what people are choosing. Jaina going with the summon water elemental, which if we can touch on it just a second, Sean, I would love to, because yeah. when people first heard Jaina, they were like, oh, ring of frost, ring of frost, ring of frost. And when we have seen Jaina, <laughs> yeah, then that's for people I was talking to, everyone was talking about ring of frost and how it's going to be so good. And, but now it seems like people have changed their position on that. And they're actually talking about how water elemental is a very, very strong force. And it does an absurd amount of damage it does. in team fights. Yeah, absolutely, 100%. Water Elemental if you're going to go for the burst. The Ring of Frost is great for control, but you don't really need to pick up Janna for control. Solo Q yeah. might be a different story, but in these drafts, you know, there should be enough control between everyone that especially with Icy Veins and level 20 with the Winter oh, yeah. Mutes, you are going to be putting out spells galore and having those mimics for 50% on a Water Elemental where you can choose the targets, yes. it's, just, it's just way too much to deal with. Now, at the same time, we've also seen cases of Blink, but at this point, I mean, we don't have material. We don't have any kind of big range mm -hmm. stuns to deal with here from Evil Geniuses. I don't suspect we're going to see Jaina on a Blink because there's just really not that much to deal with here in the back. Yeah, I mean, they have the Kerrigan, in a Kerrigan initiation, but they have Uther went cleanse at level seven, which I agree with that decision. So the moment Kerrigan tries to do a hard initiation, we're definitely going to see Rusty quick on the trigger with the cleanse in case they get caught out of position. And speaking of which, he's just kind of poking and prodding both teams at this watchtower here, uh, wanting to fight and over control of it, because if one team gets a, a good team wipe here, they can absolutely just get the golem just north of them right there. So both teams, need, both teams need to be really careful about their positioning. We also might just be delaying a little bit. If we can soak up the experience to 13, that's going to be a mm -hmm. talent tier advantage for Glorious. And, you know, they might literally be just trying to keep them interested, keep them there for the bait. We got a little bit of yep. a push going on with those creeps, but, you know, between Zagara and Equinox, and that's some pretty decent clears. Mookie, however, yes. gets in trouble. Yeah, Mookie Pants, he's getting CC, but he's able to keep himself up. Protective Shield, there's a cleanse. Nirak with a pretty good Emerald Web, but a great Devouring Maw, taking people out of the fight. And that was the moment for them to push in. But they've fallen back. Ichi's fallen back underneath the safety of their fort. Are they going to try to do a turnaround here? Because Thonlog is just picking people away. Mookie Pants is so low. Does Rusty have a heal up to save him in time? He doesn't. He does go down to the poison. But as a one for nil exchange, a lot of ultimates being blown here. And now their reprisal will be the golem here in the top lane. And they'll more than likely push up that golem in order to secure themselves that top fort. And as you said, yeah, the level 13 talent advantage just kind of showed its, itself there. And very well played by Glorious Gaming. So once again, Syracuse is showing us a little bit of a different task of our build. The mental acuity we're talking about, but the sign fusion. That's not something you see a lot of on a task yeah. The mana return into a static charge really actually did expect, you know, the side damage to come out level mm -hmm. one, not the mana return at all. But still, hey, if it's working and he can spam it out more and more and he lands it on every creep wave, you know, it really doesn't end up actually costing that much in the long run, which means he can actually split push very effectively with that. Um, but the prescience here, and then, you know, level 16 is probably going to be, again, the dimensional shift upgrade for uh, oh, yes. movement speed. He has almost like a double or triple life after that. I mean, he has, yeah. uh, it'll automatically pop, he can manually pop it, and then he has an Archon and a shield on top of it. Yep, and I I love going that build, even before the changes on Tassar, I love going it, because you just, you seem so fast, and you can be so aggressive with your positioning, uh, or if you make a mistake, you know, you have an easy out and whatnot. 
with the build. And that seems to be, from what I've seen today on Tassadar, is that seems to be kind of the build that people are going with. I haven't seen any fourth wall builds, which is unfortunate as people are kind of I've seen about it in solo but... queue, believe it or not. Oh man, I, I love fourth wall. Even back in the day when Tassadar, not back in the day, I mean, four days ago, when Tassadar was, you know, really, really, <laughs> when Tassadar was, Still the, the Archon damage machine, he's just, I went forceful anyways, but ZP, he's oh, be dear. careful, and Uberak, he, he has six points, he's able to burrow charge away, but he's out of this team fight. Cthulhu with his Odin, popped, just trying to do as much damage as he can, great devouring Maw, taking two out of the fight, but Equinox on the gene, it does go down, Glaring is so very low, there's a shield from Tassadar, Rusty is under pursuit of him, but he's gonna get away, everyone is so low on Glorious Gaming, this is ridiculous! People going down left and right with such low HP. Down goes Faye on the Zagara. So many coins, coins everywhere. Cthulhu Luck needs to be careful. His Odin is down, but he's laying down a blanket overkill to kind of zone out Mookie Pants and Rusty. So that was a, a two for three exchange going the way of Glorious Gaming. But that, that could have been absolutely a four exchange there because everyone was so low. This black card is just like coins everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> Almost thought I was playing Super Mario for a moment there. Uh, either way, Koth and Luck, very important that he did not go down that fight because he had 12 coins to his name. As I said, there was a lot of low hit points on both sides. That felt a little sloppy going back and forth. Mm -hmm. And I got to give it for Glorious because, again, Kerrigan making things happen. It was basically yep. the Kerrigan that removed Equinox out of the fight. And, yep. you know, you might be able to kill the Jaina, but the Water Elemental does persist. It's just yes. not as scary if you don't have, you know, Jaina in the back of that, landing those Frost Shots, landing the Cone of Cold, keeping up that chill debuff and capitalizing on the chill debuff for that extra damage. Because, again, she went pretty much pure Frostbolt. Winter's Rage yes. is range. Pierce with the Frost Shards and Ice Lance for the cooldown reduction did not go Icy Veins. Went for the I Storm Front. Yeah. So she's really, really afraid to stay into these front lines because Kerrigan has been taking her to town. Yeah, and I agree with that. I mean, Ice... If you, if you die, you can't do much. You got to build into it. You know what I mean? If you, if you feel like you're in a game and you and you are not achieving much because you're just simply getting picked off so much due to the nature of the enemy, other enemy's team focusing on you, then you kind of got to adapt. And Equinox, I, I agree with that choice of of keeping it, increasing his range so that way he's that way he's actually able to do some things a little bit more rather in these team fights than he has been. But you know he's waiting on that level 20 so his water elemental turns into that that beast that we know of. But we could potentially see a blink as well. You mentioned that before. That that could be a possibility if he feels so threatened that he has to get blink instead of the level 20 upgrade. Well, if he's going to feel that threatened, then I would have expected to see something like improved ice block or a frost armor or something a bit more defensive. That is true, but yeah. He's still going glass cannon. Which is, oh, you know, yes. we need the damage, apparently, because mm -hmm. we have Vala that doesn't do damage and Zakara that doesn't do damage. I mean, you can afford to go a little more defensive when you have that much more damage to yeah. on the team. I'm a little surprised from Equinox, because I've seen him do Frost Armor. I've seen him do more defensive options with Ice Barrier before, and it worked out great. I'm a little curious that he didn't do it here. So either way, he's going to be a bit more of a ranged mage. And uh, mm -hmm. as a quick note, side, uh, you know, shout out to Nick Hotz because he kind of called the, called me out on this in the Twitch chat. Uh, we don't have side damage anymore. That's why we didn't <laughs> take it. It's now side range. So guys, if you need to take range or mana return, I guess mana return just wins. <laughs> Oh man, Mookie Pants just face checking the, the bush here. He needs to be careful. He's real, real low. He's got seven coins. He's able to pop the army of ghouls off. Rusty, Rusty has 15 coins. Oh, 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 Divine Storm cuts him up for a little bit, but he does go down. ZP Burrow charges away with no HP. Mookie Pants once again in the front line. Syracuse using dimensional shift to keep himself alive. Gonna shield him up. Mookie Pants has been so low for so long. He's gonna be able to get away with his Siete coins. Right now, this is only a one for nil exchange. Unubrak is so low, but he's able to retreat. Man, once again, just it, they're not able to get the finish off a ZP finish off Glorious Gaming. They got so many people so very low. They looked dead to rights, but by the skin of their teeth are able to get away. And Rusty gave up a lot. I think he had 15 coins when he went down. Yeah. 13 coins, so Rusty gave up a lot for that. Yeah, on the surface, it was a one for zero, very close. You might say it was really even, but it was the problem of giving up the 13 exactly. coins. And now we're having keep pressure because of these uh, cannons. Not only are we out those gates, we're now gonna be out another tower. And possibly not. I don't think it's going to quite be that keep, but my goodness, is it ever going to be low? And again, more experience in the pocket here of Glorious. And yeah. that was just a really good pick for the Mookie Pants. Did face check into it, but he's not the one that paid the price for it. Yep. Yeah, and I believe actually that keep, yeah, that keep actually is going to be going down. So this is the point where once a team gains this 
much map control that, and this is one of the reasons why some people don't like this map, is they don't have to really, if they don't want to, I don't think it'll be the case, but they can play the game where they can just go around the map, continue to push lanes in, get the mercenary camps, get gold coins, and just basically win by turning in. And at, at we mentioned before, Rusty giving them so many coins, they have another turn in immediately yeah. following behind that one. This is gonna do a significant amount of damage as well. And at the same time, they're pushing bottom while it's getting, uh, while their top lane is getting destroyed by the cannon fire. So this is a very, very sticky situation right now for them. Looking at the talent build there for 16, as both teams have, uh, you know, they've accomplished their goals. They got the turn-ins, we got the boss. The boss might yep. actually be able to take down that top port, which would be a great infusion of experience here for Evil Geniuses, because they really need it. The water elemental popped out into the bottom lane. That guy can really move, isn't Holy it? cow. Yeah, he, he is a fast walking water element. He goes right <laughs> in. Wow, that's a great scout. This guy is so value right here. Look that's actually it. really funny. And um, you can't actually control, I mean, you can control the target he's on, but you don't actually control the movement on him. Yeah. So that's pretty, that's pretty funny. He's just like, oh, I know where everyone is. I'm water elemental. All right, so that top lane gate and uh, company are all out. They'll keep taking damage one more turn in, and that's going to be it for uh, that top lane. But still, 18-17, Glorious going into this with the advantage. Can they capitalize? There's a big team fight here down by the chest. Rusty is going in there, Divine Storm. He isn't going to be able to get away, but Jaina and Equinox, or uh, Jaina, Equinox on Jaina and Demon Hunter Vala going down already. ZP going ham, Burrow charging in there, and Pale's going to bring Rusty down. Faye trying to get away, using the creep to give her that speed advantage, but Glaring is hot on the trail, going to leap in there. Faye might be out. Nope, there's the Primal Grasp. Oh, man, this is going to be... Oh, she does go down. So a 3-4 for Nil Exchange. Once again, Glorious Gaming just domineering themselves on the map in team fights with the coins. This is so far, they're showing themselves who is the better team. And once again, Glorong, MVP right there. He oh, not only poisoned out and got the full combo with Maelstrom to boot on top of Jaina, but she was the big reckoning force of removing yep. Vala out of that fight as well. And your pack line is jumped by a Kerrigan and you can't do anything about it? Yeah, good game. Glass yeah. cannons are gonna fall, ladies and Big gentlemen. time. Or ice cannons in this case, Sean. Last desperation <laughs> hope team fight coming up from EG, but I don't think, I think it's uh, their efforts are rather futile. Glaren goes down, but they end up do getting the core. So a very well-earned, deserved victory for Glorious Gaming. Final game time, 60 minutes, 33 seconds, 11 kills for Glorious, and six kills for EG. Good game, well played. Yeah, definitely a very strong performance on the Black Arts Bay by Glorious. I mean, they essentially were not ever out of control in that fight. I don't think there no. was a single team fight that they went home negative. They did not. Every, every single team fight went in their way one way or the other. Astounding. Absolutely yes. astounding. Um, very, very different game to the last one I saw Kerrigan in there with the Glaring. But, you know, hey, we've now seen two maps today of Black Hearts Bay. I very highly doubt we're going to see it again. Uh, and the only other <laughs> map I've seen is Cursed Hollow, because that's usually what we start off with. Uh, and then on the flip side, it's usually um, Dragon Char. Or Dragon Char, sorry. I have Char. not yeah, I've, had, I've actually. I've not had Haunted Mines. I've not had uh, Garden of Terror today. I've had two Garden of Terrors. Um, with the re recent changes of the core, uh, that that map takes seems like it takes forever on though. Uh, that that was like the forty five minute game I casted earlier in the day. It was it was fun. I enjoyed it. It was a lot of fun. But anyways, I don't. Th I I agree. I think we're probably not going to see Black Hearts Bay. I think we're going to see the more standard maps that teams uh, tend to prefer. The uh, Dragon Shire, Curse Hollow. More than likely, I think, is what we're going to see. I don't know. I mean, maybe we'll see a Haunted Mines come out, and they'll just completely prove prove me wrong. It's known to be known to happen. Exactly. Now, all right, so we're <laughs> going to set up here for game number two here. Third place match. This is basically just for points at this point. Only first place takes home the money, and you can mm -hmm. find that over again. Solid Jake and GG. But this is for the points for the monthly, where I think we bump it up to $500. So this yes. is a very a big, important match for these guys because points, 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 top eight. I believe, are the invites. So we'll see. Who can take it? Evil Geniuses or Glorious? Game number two is going to be coming your way in just a few. Don't go anywhere.